Hey everybody, this is John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope, also the CEO of Bryant Group Ventures. I'm coming to you today as the CEO and founder of Operation Hope. Very excited about this uh, spontaneous announcement uh, of something really cool. I'm going to also package this announcement with really the on the ground realization of my philosophy for the book How the Poor Can Save Capitalism the bestseller that I wrote uh, that I think uh, really reimagines the economy, reimagines the role of free enterprise with regard to the poor, the underserved, the struggling class, those folks with too much month at the end of their money, uh, people like you and me uh, who grew up in Compton, California, in South Central LA and Detroit, folks who have a dream but maybe don't believe that, that dream as being supported by the, the larger society. Or maybe we don't think that uh, capitalism works for us because we see it for, quote, those people. I want to break up all of those uh, assumptions and presumptions. And I want to come to you straight today to talk about uh, Detroit. Uh, now, this may seem like a local story, but it's not. Because the Detroit story is wrapped up in the American story. By the way, uh, I'm in Washington, D.C. today uh, on my way to the Black Enterprise Prize Entrepreneurship Conference in uh, Miami, where I'll speak tomorrow, and I'll be going uh, live, hopefully, from Miami. If you want to uh, uh, comment, add your comments below. I see people signing on already. By the way, we have 2.8 million viewers uh, in two months, so the civil rights movement is real. Uh, it's uh, unbought, it's unbossed, uh, it's on the ground, it's P both PhD and PhD. It's a straight talk civil rights series with no bias, no drama, uh, only love for you, only uplift, uh, and it's really re reality TV for adults, for grown people, as a friend of mine would say. So, uh, so let's talk about Detroit. Um, really, Detroit is America, uh, and America needs Detroit to win again. What do I mean by that? 60 years ago, Detroit was the richest city in the world. I want that to sit in for a moment. 60 years ago, Detroit was richer than Paris, richer than London, richer than New York. Uh, it was the richest city, richer than Hong Kong, on the planet. Uh, and my, my, my friend, uh, my new friend, Henry Ford III, who was in your city with the Henry Ford Company, I'm going to try to get him to talk at some point about the history of his great-grandfather, who really helped to create the middle class. Uh, I'm going to do a whole piece just on on, on his company and the Ford story, but uh, you know, a hundred plus years ago, uh, Henry Ford dreamed up an automobile company. A hundred other people dreamed up automobile companies the same year. He wasn't the only one, but he was smart enough to pay his workers enough to buy the automobiles that they were making. And boom, you had a middle class. It was created overnight. Really, Detroit created the American middle class. And from that came a lot of uh, people of color uh, and you know, white, black, red, brown, and yellow, they all got to participate in some green, uh, the creation of a solid middle class, the aspiration of those who may have only had modest education but had enormous chutzpah, enormous uh, uh, sort of inspira inspired um, hustle in their life and they worked hard and they're living the American dream. Well, that dream started to crumble and we all know the story of the largest bankruptcy, municipal bankruptcy in American history. I'm now talking about a resurgence. Detroit's coming back, folks. Detroit is across the street from Canada. <laughs> it's coming back. Let me tell you something. They aren't growing any more land either. So they are selling, I'd say giving away. The Detroit Land Bank is giving away, selling properties for $1,000, 2000 The cost for your stereo set in your car, you can go buy a home in Detroit, get your boys together, your family together on weekends and rehab the property and either rent it out, rehab it, re rent it, either buy it, rehab and rent it, or buy it, rehab and sell it, or buy it, rehab and live in it. But that becomes your hedge fund against poverty because they are not growing any more land. Detroit is coming back. All downtown is already coming back. But that's not my announcement today. That's just the backdrop uh, for the comeback. Rainbows after storms. You cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. I'm announcing today Detroit Uplift 2020. It's sponsored by Operation Hope, the organization that I founded. We're going to outline a couple key cities and go deep uh, in those cities with what I call civil rights. Civil rights was waging one in the streets. Thank God for that. I was with my hero, Ambassador Andrew Young, today, who was a strategist of Dr. King in the civil rights movement. 
So they integrated the lunch counter, but by, by Ambassador Andrew Young's own acknowledgement, they failed or did not succeed in integrating the dollar because Dr. King was assassinated before he could pivot to the Poor People's Campaign. So to quote Ambassador Andrew Young, even in our presentation today when he spoke at the, at the consumer, uh, the, the CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau here in Washington, to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. I'm going to repeat that. To live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. It's what we don't know that we don't know that's killing us. It's the history of the Freedmen's Bank coming uh, home to roost. 160, 51 years ago, bank created by Abraham Lincoln to teach free slaves about money. Lincoln gets killed the next month, and we just never got the memo on money. So how does that relate to Detroit? Detroit, and I want to commend the mayor, we commend the Detroit Chamber of Commerce, Mayor Mike Dugan, uh, who's working with us, and uh, Sandy Baru, the, uh, the CEO of the Detroit Chamber, for being real and sort of uh, blunt about the realities there. You have about an average income of $24,000, $25,000 in Detroit. The whole city is not sustainable, right? Because the poverty rate is about $24,000 a year in this country. That is financial instability. You've got to get that, that economic base solid, and you've got to get people some aspiration and some lift. I'm convinced that there's not enough corporate jobs in Detroit to go around. I'm convinced the government cannot give uh, hookups to enough people, legitimate or, or, or just being kind. I'm convinced that you've got to create entrepreneurs, a generation of entrepreneurs and small business owners in Detroit from the bottoms up, from these neighborhoods uh, that, that uh, people have in some cases, uh, I think wrongly written off. I think there's a Steve Jobs on every street corner in Detroit. But it's going to be small business owners, entrepreneurs, small businesses, shoot up startups in the year three through year seven that will create all the job growth in Detroit. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're uh, launching Detroit Uplift 2020. You can go to the, uh, the Facebook page to get information, more information on De Detroit Uplift 2020. Follow it. There's also going to be a website page on operationhope.org. Follow it. Keep me honest. We're going to open 100 offices in Detroit. Boom. By 2020. Hope Inside that raises credit scores to 700. That's HUD certified, SBA certified, Small Business Administration, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau certified, FDIC uh, certified for financial literacy. Um, uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau uh, Outreach Office, the, consu the uh, Consumer Certified Counseling, uh, providing free credit scores from Equifax and TransUnion. It is uh, basically a private banker for the working poor, a Starbucks <laughs> of financial inclusion, one-stop shopping, no fee to you, free because of our partners, our sponsors. I want 25, minimum 25 open sides in Detroit. We've already opened our first one with Fifth Third Bank in the Northwest Community uh, center, I believe that's what it's called, the Northwest Community Center, but with Fifth Third Bank, and it's already exceeding all of its results. Crystal, my financial coach there, is doing a great job. It's, we've just uh, brought on a new leadership there, a new market president for not only Detroit, but for Michigan. His name is Ryan Mack. He's a Detroit uh, native. He's a bad brother. Reach him at ryan.mack at operationhope.org. Ryan, R-Y-A-N dot M-A-C-K at operationhope.org. Blow up his email address. Let him know that you are on and popping, that you want to be part of this movement to uplift Detroit. You want to become a civil rights leader, a civil rights soldier, a civil rights volunteer, and we will include you. And, and, and so the first office is, is already confirmed. We are now announcing our board of directors. So for 25 Hope Inside offices, 25 Hope Business in the Box academies, where we take kids to a course in financial literacy, a course in entrepreneurship, a course in dignity, values, because you can't pray in school anymore. Can't talk about that, but I think that's like crazy. But these kid needs values, right? So to know what they're for. Of uh, course, uh, 25 businesses you can start for $500 or less, right? And then the kid has uh, uh, a chance to take that business idea and mold it, and then a pitch event in that kid's auditorium twice a year, think Shark Tank for kids. Two minutes, pitch your idea, go. When they win the pitch, middle school to high school will fund the business up to $500. Write the check. The money has to go into a bank account. Remember our passbook experience growing up, getting our own bank account? I think that's going to transform a kid's mind. It'll also deal with the issue that a lot of our folks are unbanked. 12 million people unbanked in this country, 40 million underbanked in this country. It's not, uh, it's not uh, sustainable. We've got to get people into the banking 
system uh, so that we get access to cheap capital and all the other benefits of a mainstream banking system. And out of these check cashers, payday loan lenders, rent to own stores, title lenders, I'm going to rob these folks of their customers in broad daylight by moving credit scores 120 points through hope inside. Because nothing changes your life more than God or love than moving your credit score 120 points. <laughs> hope is the box academy. What's that mission? Connect, connect education aspiration, fourth grade through twelfth grade. If you can't create, get a job, create a job. It is connecting youth to job creation through entrepreneurship. Then uh, internship America. We're going to give kids a five hundred dollar stipend, a business suit, business cards, transportation money, food money for six weeks to go work in an office environment to give these kids a contact with somebody with a business card, who's got a, a salary, who's got you know a, 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 you know a, a, a success male and female, so they can model something different and model what they see. I'm convinced that our kids overwhelmingly in these communities want to be rap stars, athletes, and drug dealers, not because they're dumb or they're stupid, they're brilliant. They're modeling what they see. And I want to give the kids something different to see. So that's the get a job strategy, internship. This is the create a job strategy. Those are 25 offices each. Then hope inside, another 25 offices. That's for family empowerment. Uh, and I want a total of 100 offices. The other 25 will be a collection uh, of uh, holistic sort of delivery centers um, that are sort of specialized. Now, where are we at right now? You said, oh, this is a lot of talk, John. What are you doing? We announced, we will announce eight offices. I don't want to get ahead of the press release, but our first eight offices are already committed. Let me tell you what I can tell you. Uh, we've already got a new board of directors there. I'm honored to, uh, to announce that uh, Tanya Allen, CEO of the Skillman Foundation. It's going to chair our board. That's a bad sister. That is a black woman with a purpose uh, who cares about all people, all, uh, all races, all places. Uh, and she's passionate about uh, Detroit. And she's running one of the biggest foundations in the world. She's going to chair our foundation. Uh, we have Judge uh, Rosen, who, who was responsible for the bankruptcy uh, to get Detroit into proper bankruptcy, and then was responsible for getting Detroit out of bankruptcy, a living legend in uh, Detroit. And Judge Mallet, uh, who is uh, executive at Detroit Medi uh, Medical Center, who also is an extra extraordinary leader there. Mark Davidoff of Deloitte, uh, one of my dear friends, the accounting firm, consulting firm Deloitte. He's also chairman of the Detroit Chamber of Commerce. And then my friend, the guy who made it all possible, Sandy Barua, the CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, is that, that is the founding uh, board, uh, and we're launching this movement. They just put the Detroit, uh, Detroit, Detroiter Magazine, the Detroit Chamber of Commerce, put us on their cover to announce uh, the rollout of this work for their, I think it was a March or April edition. Uh, and now we're operationalizing these first eight offices. So uh, the Detroit Medical Center is going to roll out a Hope Inside for their 18,000 employees. Level One Bank is rolling out a Hope Inside on the campus of a major university uh, in Detroit. Um, the, the Fifth Third Bank, I've already mentioned, uh, they're committed. PNC is going to be doing, PNC Bank's going to be doing uh, some work uh, with us. The mayor's office has already committed some dollars and is giving us some support. The Casey Family Programs has given us uh, uh, a fellow to support our efforts. The uh, Skillman Foundation has made a half million dollar commitment uh, for the youth piece so we can put several Hope Business Box offices in the schools and there's some commitments that I am not comfortable announcing yet but it's coming. Got some federal support, the White House federal uh, regular, uh, uh, coordinator, uh, President Obama's administration really was the door opener for this whole thing. Don Graves initially at the White House uh, who's now an advisor for the Vice President opened this door that, and we walked in. So I'm getting long in the tooth. I don't know this is, uh, I'm at 13 minutes so I don't want to go too deep. Uh, I hopefully gave you uh, an over, over, overview. I want this to be transparent to you when we're doing this. I want you to know we're doing it in real time. I want you to, I want you to see it, feel it, touch it, and we're making uh, an impact. Now, from time to time, I'm going to bring some success stories on to show you how people are changing their lives, starting small businesses, becoming entrepreneurs, raising their credit score, um, which, by the way, half of employers in this country require a credit check. Uh, you know, you like it or not like it, that's the reality. We're going to help you uh, get over that barrier. Earn income tax credit. Now, you want to be an entrepreneur, you say you don't have any capital. By the way, that is not true. Don't ever say that because thoughts are things. The word capital comes from the Latin root word capitas, means knowledge in the head. So even money is not what capital is. It's wealth starts here. 
But let's just say, let's just, just say, well, okay, John, I don't have any money. How do I start a business? The earning of tax credit could be a source of capital for you. Do you know that one out of four uh, people who qualify for EITC never asked for it? I did a whole video on this. You can go watch it. So I'm not going to give you a lot of details here, but there's no doubt. So if you make $50,000 a year or less, the federal government owes you a check if you work. If you're in Detroit and you make, this is, by the way, any place in the country. You're in Harlem. You're in L.A. You're in Wisconsin. You're in, you know, I don't care where you are. You, you know, you are, uh, you're here in Washington, D.C., in Anacostia. And you make $28,000 a year, you have two children, you work, you're a hard-working person, not asking anybody for a handout. The federal government owes you a check, not a credit, for $3,000 to $4,000. If you have never filed, it's retroactive for three years. That's up to $12,000. That could solve, that could pay off your car note, yes. That could, because a third of Americans would have to pay to sell their car to raise $4,000. That is a fact, by the way. Uh, uh, you can uh, cure your mortgage, the late payments for your mortgage. You can stop arguing with your husband or your wife over money. But let's be aspirational. $5,000, $10,000, $12,000 dollars that doesn't have a bill payer's name on it is enough money for you to start a small business uh, to get going. When I started, I had much less capital than that, and you can start fulfilling your dream. Let your 9 to 5 job, financial 5 to 9, dream. So. And then I'm going to do a whole piece on venture capital for the poor. How, how you can, you've been doing so much for so little, for so long, you can almost do anything with nothing. All right. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm all pumped up about uh, the revitalization of Detroit. Now, you see I'm dressed uh, this is the way I happen to be dressed today. But part of this message is I'm not a politician. I'm not running for office. I'm not, I'm not anything you've ever imagined. I'm just an entrepreneur and a businessman who founded a nonprofit, come from the inner city and the underserved communities. I was homeless for six months of my life, and I want to give back. And we have two million clients, $2.5 billion we've invested in underserved neighborhoods through our partners, some of which I've mentioned here today. Uh, in fact, I'm trying to get the federal government to even write, write a check in Detroit. I'll hopefully be able to announce that soon, to match fund every new office there. And, and I just had a dream, right? And I'm making that dream real in my own way. And I'm coming to you straight to say, that uh, history is in the making. That we can't, we don't have to just say, I have a dream from 60 years ago. We can honor Dr. King and honor Ambassador Young and honor John Lewis and honor Dr. Dorothy Hyde and honor, uh, you know, Harriet Tubman, and honor all these heroes and sheroes who, you know, uh, CJ, Madam CJ Walker, the first black female millionaire. Honor all these heroes and sheroes by hitting it today on the ground. Become the change you want to see in the world today. Just because history does not feel historic doesn't mean that it's not happening right now. History may not feel like history making when it's happening, but that does not mean you're not making history right now. You may be doing it right in your house, just with your children, your siblings, uh, your uh, child, or your mother, your father, or your friend, looking at how you behave and saying, I want to do that. And you change the world. And you've left a legacy. All right, I'm done. Reach out to Ryan Mack. He's my leader in the state. By the way, we're coming to Flint, uh, Michigan, too. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I got a big announcement. I think we're going to be able to announce. I can tell you who the partner is, Huntington Bank, in Flint, Michigan. I thank the president for going to Flint. Uh, we're coming to Flint uh, as well. You know, so Detroit's initially our focus, but we're going to spread out to the rest of the state. If I miss somebody, if I miss mentioning you, I apologize. Blame it on my head, not my heart. As you see, I have no notes. But uh, what you cannot uh, 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 mistake is my passion for the untapped potential, the potential and the aspirational wealth of the great people of Detroit. I'm coming. I'll be there regularly. Uh, sign up to the movement. Go to Ryan Mack. Go to Operation Hope. Go to Civil Rights. Love you much. I'll ch I'll, I'm going to respond to the comments because I'm at 19 minutes, mostly offline. Let me see if I can look at somebody real quick here. I got. John Copening, um, just because history doesn't uh, happen right now, you could be making it exactly. Uh, uh, Keith uh, Kiki Williams, do you have a location in Charlotte? Uh, no, not yet, but we're coming to Charlotte. Brandon Hilliburton, are you in Ohio? Yes, we're in Cleveland, Ohio with PNC Bank, and we're going to be coming bigger there through our partnership with Huntington Bank. Their CEO, uh, Steve Steinauer, just joined our global board of directors. Um, come to Dallas. Yes, we absolutely have to come to Dallas. 
Uh, we are working right now on, there's nothing to announce yet, but I'm working on some partnerships in Dallas. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to respond to most of this offline. I hope that this was not too long. Hopefully it was not too long in the tooth. Uh, again, big love to the Regional Chamber of Commerce, the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce, and Sandy Barua, Mayor uh, Dugan, who got the lights working in Detroit <laughs> so people could walk down the street safely. Uh, uh, that man deserves uh, a great deal of credit, right? Uh, hats off to all the heroes and sheroes who don't get credit in Detroit for bringing a great American city back. All I'm going to do is augment and support the, their great work. Love, peace, and light. I'll answer these comments offline. Talk to you soon.